Sony's at it again. Apparently, reportedly, multiple sources that Sony's about to release this handheld. You're seeing it right here on Insider Gaming. It says exclusive Sony's next PlayStation handheld. Now, it's no secret Sony would like to compete with Nintendo in the field. Uh, they've attempted in the past with the PSP and the Vita. But what they're doing here, to me, makes no logical sense. And this assumes that this is true. Again, there's multiple sources on this, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, Insider Gaming here being the primary one. But man, I am... I'm a bit miffed at what Sony's doing. So let's just see exactly what this system supposedly is. So following days of speculation, Insider Gaming can report there's a new PlayStation handheld in development. Codenamed the Q Lite, the next PlayStation handheld is the next piece of Sony hardware that aims to be yet another piece of hardware that requires the PlayStation 5. Insider Gaming understands that the Q Lite is not a cloud streaming device, but instead uses remote play with PlayStation 5 a feature the console giant has been pushing these past couple of weeks. Sporting adaptive streaming to 1080p and 60fps, the new device will require constant connectivity to the internet. As for the console's physical features, early prototypes show the console will look a lot like a PlayStation 5 controller, but with a massive 8-inch LCD touchscreen in the center. The device sports adaptive triggers for haptic feedback and will include what you would come to expect from a handheld volume buttons, speakers, and audio input jack, etc. Insider Gaming understands the Q Lite is in its QA phase and is scheduled to release before the PlayStation 5 Pro and after the detachable disk drive PS5, which is supposedly coming this year. As previously mentioned by industry insider Jeff Grubb, Sony is planning to announce its second phase of the PlayStation 5, which was in reference to a future game slate. Ironically, though, this second phase is very much true for Sony's hardware offerings. With the new detachable disk drive PlayStation 5, Project Nomad with wireless earphones, Project Voyager with a wireless headset, and the Q Lite handheld all scheduled to release within a very short period. It's understood that the PlayStation 5 Pro is aiming for a holiday 2024 release, which again feels a little soon. I, th I would figure 2025. Anyways, so whenever Sony's next PlayStation showcase will be, it's seemingly going to be a big one. What do you think of Sony's new handheld console? Let us know in the comments below. And you can literally go in the comments below my video and let me know what you think. As for my thoughts on this, I think this is a mistake. Uh, there's nothing happening here we can't just do with our phones. For those who don't know and have never experienced this, like on Xbox, you can download the Xbox app and you can do a virtualized play session from your Xbox series, right? So essentially you are streaming your Xbox series to your phone and you can play with a full on Xbox controller that you Bluetooth in. Uh, you could obviously, if you're in the same home, just have the controller connected to the Xbox, but you're not in the same room. Uh, you can use custom control types if you want. You can get attachable controllers to your phone, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of options, but it doesn't require that you buy a brand new device. You just have to have a controller. And not only does it work in the home because it uses the internet, it works anywhere. And I think that is the thought process here behind this device, except that it requires a constant internet connection, whereas on your phone, in theory, you could stream it to your phone and be uh, anywhere, right? You could you could be at a cafe, uh, you could be on a bus ride and just use your internet's internet, uh, your phone's internet to access your Xbox. But it doesn't really work that well in practice, so that's just something to keep in consideration in the back of your mind. But I am very curious why Sony's doing this. Uh, if they don't want to directly compete with the Switch and a Steam Deck or you know what, what, all the other devices that exist out there in this space then I don't really know what they're doing with this device and why it exists. Uh, uh, maybe it's a super cheap thing that's 100 bucks or less, and because of that, people are willing to dive in and buy it. I guess that could be a market for it. I just don't understand its purpose. If it's just a PlayStation 5 controller split in half with a, a screen in the middle, like you, you could have just created a phone controller and left it at that, sold it for like 30 bucks, and called it a day. But instead, you created this whole new device to try to play PlayStation 5 on the go. I mean, they, again, they've attempted this before with the Vita and, and, and doing remote play there, and it, it it's nice. It works. It's just it's not that practical. I, I, I guess this. if I had to think of anything this reminds me of, it's the Wii U. Now, the Wii U was obviously a little different because you couldn't really go more than eight feet from the system, so it felt a bit more tethered to the console than this will be, where you could probably be anywhere on Wi-Fi in your home, and it should, in theory, work. 
I just think that there's a lot of misses with a concept like this. Sony had an opportunity here to release a standalone gaming platform that could play its own games. But with it needing to be tethered to a PS5, it just sort of adds to the expensive ecosystem that's becoming the PlayStation 5. So first off, you have a $400 or $500 system. But you want VR? Well, not only do you have that $500 system, now you got to buy a two, three, four hundred dollars headset with the games on top. Oh, but now you also want to be able to play on the go. Well, now you got to buy a two, three, four hundred dollars handheld to take with you as well. And it just sort of—it's it, nice when it all works together, but it's all centralized around the PS5. So now you have these super expensive peripherals, and really calling this a handheld is is weird. It's a peripheral. It's an accessory to the PlayStation 5. It's just another super expensive one. And with PlayStation VR 2 sales not really being where Sony wants them to be, I'm very curious why they went this particular route with this particular device. I think the sales of this are probably going to be even worse than PlayStation VR 2. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong, and this is exactly what Sony consumers want. I have a PlayStation 5. I have a Switch. I have an Xbox. I have no desire to play my PlayStation 5 games on the go. They are big and beautiful, and I think they deserve to be on my giant, you know, 80 inch, 85 inch TV. I don't really see a point to taking them on the go personally. And I know Switch has opened up a whole world of gaming to me, but most of the games that I'd play on the go, I'm not going to play with my kids around anyways on, on PlayStation besides like Spider Man or something. So uh, this is just my personal take, though. Um, it's interesting to see companies take risks like this. I know that if Nintendo tried doing this for the Wii U, I would really question it too. If they're like, oh, we're releasing a new handle, but it can't play its own games. It has to be streaming it off your Wii U. I would have been like, okay, so you just took the gamepad and made it go further. I don't know that that's necessarily a great idea, but that's what Sony's trying here, and I guess we'll see how it works out. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.